and to discuss both News Limited's attitude towards the Gillard government and the news of the world scandal. I spoke earlier today to News Limited's chairman and chief executive, John Hartigan, at the company's Sydney headquarters. Mr Hartigan, you said in your statement yesterday that you have absolutely no reason to believe that there's been any wrongdoing at News Limited. What's the source of your confidence? Look, I've worked in newspapers for 45 years, uh, a lot of that as an editor. Uh, I know the newsrooms, I know how cultures develop, and I'm hugely confident that there is no improper or unethical behaviour in our newsrooms. In the United Kingdom, News International executives assured the parliament and the public that the unethical practices were the work of one rogue operator and that was proven to be incorrect. Does it make it, make it harder for you then to make the case that you've just made? I think it does, but I think people need to understand the very different environments that we have in newspapers in this country and also in the United Kingdom. Um, you know, they refer to a lot of the media as red tops in the United Kingdom. They're very aggressive newspapers. They have, you know, they're very sensational. They deal with people's lives, private lives, and they, some of the behaviours that have come out have obviously been driven by the need to get in front of each other. I would argue very strenuously that we don't have those behaviours in Australia. It is a competitive environment in Australia, though. It is, but uh, I, I see journalists every day and I know when they're behaving in an entirely proper way. And, you know, cultures that develop... You see some English journalists that come here and as soon the culture rejects them. You know, they, they, I'm not suggesting all English journalists. There's some very fine ones, but there's the cowboys in, in the system and they simply don't get any, any grounding here. If I'd come to see you the week before the Melbourne Storm salary cap sure. scandal broke, you would have said to me then, Lee, I'll tell you that that would not be going on. If something of that scale could be going on without News Limited executives being aware, how could there not be something like phone hacking going on sure. and you not being oh, aware That's a very good point. I'd argue, again, very strenuously, that one is a football club. It has its executive team, it has a board, and it had people that were working together illegally to cover up. Um, in the case of our newspaper system, uh, we have individual divisions. Each of them has a managing director. They have editorial processes. If there's monies to be advanced, they need to be signed off on. So this, the monies that would, would support this illegal behaviour simply would be brought to light. You've announced that there'll be a review of editorial expenditure yeah. over the past three years to make sure that all co uh, payments to contributors have been for um, legitimate things. Why did you decide on that three-year period, particularly given that the salient period in the UK predates that? Sure. Um, look, frankly, I'd be open to any period that anyone wants. Uh, I thought that, for the reasons of the Melbourne storm, that it was very important that rather than saying hand on heart, no illegal practice or unethical practice happens in News Limited, uh, put some rubber on the road by having a period of time to give people confidence about our behaviours. Your papers, and indeed all of us in the media, are often the first to criticise organisations investigating themselves. Would News Limited be open to um, cooperating with a parliamentary inquiry or an independent inquiry into journalist conduct in Australia if one were announced? Yeah, look, I think that that would be uh, totally unnecessary. Um, I think that the Press Council, despite the fact that some people are suggesting that doesn't work in an environment, I think is a very solid body. You've got a statutory authority that looks at broadcast media, and I would argue that the um, behaviours of press, which operate under a Press Council, which is funded by ourselves, um, are no different to the behaviours of uh, those who operate under a statutory organisation. You're known to be close to Rupert Murdoch. Have you spoken to him about what's going on in the UK? No, I haven't. Uh, is Rebecca Brooks going to be coming to work for the company in Australia? No, she's not. Do you have any plans to speak to Mr Murdoch about what's been going on? I speak to Rupert Murdoch often, um, and undoubtedly I will, but uh, quite obviously he's got his hands full at the moment. In the UK, some of the focus now is on the relationships between the media and politicians and whether or not the Murdoch press bully and intimidate them and abuse their power by running stories with an obvious agenda. Do your newspapers in Australia bully politicians or officials in that manner? Look, I think we, uh, we 
we take them uh, to their official capacity and responsibilities. Uh, I don't believe that we ever overstep. Yes, it's a, it's a love-hate relationship and sometimes it's loving and sometimes it's very hateful. Uh, but I don't think, generally speaking, that we exceed our authority. The independent MP Rob Oakeshott believes mm. that since he backed Julia Gillard to form government that some of the news limited reporting about him has been, to quote him, malicious and shamelessly unfair because uh, they disagreed with the decision that he made. Do you see examples of that in your publications? Look, I, th I think we've been very aggressive with Rob Oakeshott as we have with the other independents. Unfairly aggressive? I wouldn't have thought so. I think his electorate, uh, which is largely a conservative electorate, uh, asks questions of him and we reflect those questions. The Age reported in June last year that you personally told a meeting of senior New South Wales police that they could choose to work with News Limited or not and that paper reported that police took that as a threat that they, if they didn't cooperate with your group's reporters that they would receive negative coverage. Are they right in that interpretation? No they're not. In fact it's the opposite. The police commissioner at that time said to me that he had no intention of working with the media in this country. Uh, he then went about, in my view, a series of, uh, of leaking uh, to a, an opposition newspaper organisation, but he instigated that. I went there to, to really open the bounds of having a relationship with him. He chose not to. So what, what did you mean then when you said you can work with us or, or against us? No, I didn't say that. What I said, what he said, was that he had no intention of working with the media. He was a new police commissioner and he chose to go about his way in a very different and, and not open way and that I would have thought he would have. And so what did you say to that? I said, well, that's his initiative. If he plans to do that, I, I didn't question that. A number of senior government ministers have told 7.30's political editor Chris Yulman that they believe News Limited is doing all it can to force regime change in Australia, that they want the Gillard government out. Stephen Conroy said that on the record. Is that the case? Look, you know, I've heard that that has been said. Um, interestingly, no one has stood up to say, hey, uh, it's me. And I would suggest that's a whispering campaign. And like most whispering campaigns, it has no element of truth. Well, some of the examples that people point to um, are things like Anthony Albanese has said that News Limited papers have run inaccurate stories. Stephen Conroy has complained that the coverage of the NBN, for example, is skewed to be negative and, and not balanced. What do you say to those examples? Well, I think most people would think that the BER program was a sham uh, and very badly organised. And I think that some of our newspapers reflected that very strongly. Some of the other issues, the NBN, I think, you know, Australians are asking a lot of questions about the transparency of huge amounts of billions of dollars. So I would uh, suggest that we're acting in the public interest. So you stand by the, your coverage, or say the Australians' coverage of the NBN as being fair and balanced? I do, yeah. There was a meeting of News Limited executives and senior journalists and edited in, editors in Carmel in the United States recently, and again, Gillard government ministers have told 7.30 that they believe that after that meeting, News Limited publications escalated their anti-Gillard government campaign. Was there any directive issued along those lines? I think it's very uh, necessary to say what that meeting was about. We have a lot of meetings. We're a, we're a global company. And we're going through arguably the greatest change in media at the moment. You're seeing all sorts of digital channels. You're seeing audiences moving around. That was about seeing what is the best practice for us as a company, as a corporation. So there's no company-wide uh, directive then that you want the Gillard government out? Absolutely not. I think, you know, we're a company of values like most companies and we have very implicit values. We have things that we think as a company and individually as editors that need to be done. One of them is a, a leadership vacuum by a minority government, but there's lots of leadership uh, vacuums around Australia at the moment. You know, there's lots of issues. If you disagree that News Limited is running a campaign against the Gillard government, where then do you think is the source of this widespread view among ministers? Why is it held? Well, I think it's held because uh, largely we're the only organisation that really takes it up to the government. And, uh, you know, also when they're at record low uh, levels of public support, I think that endears that sense that hey, there's one organisation out to get us, 
uh, rather than the performance of uh, the party. You don't think you could say that the Sydney Morning Herald and the Age and the ABC uh, apply a reasonable amount of scrutiny to the Gillard government? They do, but uh, they also feed very largely. They get preferred treatment because they tend to support most of the government initiatives. The Australian uh, doesn't. Uh, it does on occasion, but it really is very uh, strident in the way that it covers politics. And I'd argue it's really the only newspaper in Australia that properly covers politics, national politics. The government's extended the deadline for a decision about the Australian network yeah. tender, which is being bid for by Sky and the ABC. Why do you believe that the government, or the cabinet, has taken that out of the hands of DFAT and given it to Stephen Conroy? Look, I'd lovely to have a discussion about this, but part of the uh, part of the tender process is that we not speak uh, publicly about it. Um, despite the fact that some appear to have, uh, and I plan to abide by that. John Hardigan, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you me. very much.